Sabrina Davis is here. She's our instructor. She is a senior vice president with Open Bank. And this is a new presentation today. So I'm glad that all of you are joining us. It's going to be focused on understanding SBA loans. Thank you for joining us, Sabrina. Good morning. Thank you, Deborah. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you are fine. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> I see you've got little ones you're you have in the background. <laughs> I do. I do. I have all three grandbabies. So I appreciate yeah. everybody's patience. Well, very good. And thank you to everybody being here this morning. And Recording in progress. Deborah, thank you for um, having me here. And, and, you know, as the Women's Business Center, in my opinion, is one of the most favored in, in my uh, research uh, as far as uh, presenting information that's good for you, understanding the importance of things you need to know in successfully running your business. And wanted to spend a little time with you today uh, as Deborah and I and the Women's Business Center got together and thought, you know, how could we add additional value? And sometimes the community um, understands conventional lending when it comes to banks. But it can be a little bit of a challenge understanding the details of the value of small business administration, government back loans, and how it can add value to you and your business as you're looking to decide what is the best way and what are some additional resources to be able to attain funding for your business. You know, whether you are a small business, um, meaning that you're in different life cycles of your business. You might be in the startup phase of your business um, and you haven't even started. You're thinking of a great idea. You may be in the actual startup component of your business where you've already started. You started your entity and now you need additional funding for your business and helping you decide how do you go to the banks or credit unions and ask for that money. And or you may be an existing, uh, more experienced business and you're looking to fund a particular project that you have. So what we're gonna be talking about today is specifically when you cannot get conventionally or traditional financing from a bank, you know, what do you do? Where do you go? How do you attain funding? for your business because you still need the money. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that and how SBA can add that value and take a deeper dive on, well, what do you do to be prepared to apply for that type of loan? And I'm gonna start, uh, let's go ahead and share my screen. Um, as I am doing that, I just wanted to give you an idea of who I am. I am actually a financial advisor for Fulton Bank. I specifically do SBA-backed loans, government-backed loans. And um, in my journey and being here, you know, at Fulton Bank, our value statement guides everything that we do. And me as a financial advisor, my commitment is to treat my clients the way that I would want to be treated. And, you know, that's first by listening and fully understanding their pain points, you know, even way before recommending a solution. Providing the right solution is critical. And, you know, when it comes to addressing your short-term and both your long-term needs, it's really important to understand that as a financial advisor. So, you know, I personally am very passionate through my career and expertise that I have that can offer you today and dedicated you know, to being my client's trusted advisor. And that really starts by having a knowledge of understanding what are the differences of different products and services. And, and as you get to know your bank and your banker uh, and things that we're getting ready to talk about, those things are going to be important for you to find the right solution for you and your business through the right trusted advisement. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, let me share my screen here. So 
So, Deborah, I just wanted to double check. Can you see my screen where it says Small Business Administration? Yes. Okay, very good. Sometimes it ends up on the right screen. Sometimes it's a hot mess. So, thank you. I appreciate your uh, your assistance. So, you know, we're together talking this morning about Small Business Administration and the value that it lends. You know, just to cover a few uh, pieces of information and the value, you know, we, meaning SBA loans, you know, what is SBA-backed loans? Let's start with having a conversation with that. If you cannot get conventionally financed through traditional bank lending, this is a way and a rate resource for you to reach out to the banks that offer SBA lending and see what those options are for financing your business. So if you've gone to a bank or a credit union, you've been turned down for a business loan, uh, whether you're a startup business or you just don't have strong tax returns, maybe you don't even have any tax returns because you're a startup business. You know, that is a great resource for you to reach out and find the right bank that offers SBA loans. So a lot of you might have heard of the PPP, which is the Payroll Protection Program. Some of you might have heard of EIDL, E-I-D-L. And those are SBA-type government-backed grants or loans. So the difference between those and the ones I'm talking about today, the PPP or the EIDL, so the PPP Payroll Protection Program, you had to be in business as of February of last year. And that was a granted program where the government was offering funds to be able to help those business entrepreneurs that were already in business with payroll to keep you in business through a hardship, which was COVID. Um, and that was a different dynamic and that is not what we're talking about today. But if you need additional information or resources on that, just let me know. But that grant program that the government was offering is not available uh, as we speak. Uh, don't know if they are going to make that available in the future. Um, but right now, you may want to reach out to your economic development department of each one of the cities that you are doing business with, uh, as you have joined on the phone today, and see if they have any additional funds to help if you are already in business and you're, con and you're dealing with some hardship through the pandemic. Um, that is where they are funneling some of the funds strategically to help those businesses as they need. So that leads us to the conversation about EIDL, E-I-D-L. If you are already in business, you may want to reach out to sba.gov, sba.gov. That's the Small Business Administration directly and ask them if you would be able to qualify for the E-I-D-L loan. It's terms that's up to 30 years, and the rates are at 3.75%. And you have to go directly to the SBA to apply for that. So then that gives me a segue into small business administration funding through the bank. If you cannot get traditionally financed or you've been turned down by a bank or a credit union, then where do you go? Well, you reach out to the bank that offers small business administration government-backed loans, because not all banks do, and find out do they offer that and what their process is. And so I uh, specifically do this for Fulton Bank for the state of Virginia, and am vice president of Fulton Bank here, uh, and this is what I do. So you're welcome to reach out to me. I will share my contact information at the end. If you have additional questions or needs, I'm trying to give you uh, strategically some time back at the end of the presentation so you can ask questions that might come to the surface. Please, or to mind, please share that in your chat 
screen as we continue through the presentation. So as we get towards the end of the presentation, uh, I will revert back to the chat room and see what questions that you have that I may be able to answer. So just keep that in mind. I um, ask you to share your question in the chat room and therefore we can just move forward. So what is small business administration? So if you are a startup business or you have risk associated to the bank that will not allow us to approve your loan, risks are banks are risk adverse, credit unions are risk adverse. And if you are too risky to the bank, basically the bank will reach out to the government and say, look, we think this is a good idea. Uh, we know what the um, SOP is for the government and we want to follow those guidelines. So you will uh, uh, be able to give the bank funds for being able to approve your loan. So the bank, let's say you come to Fulton Bank and you're like, okay, I need a loan for $100,000 for this project that I need for my business. Whether I'm a startup or whether I just only want to put a little bit in, of money in the game, will Fulton Bank approve my request? Fulton Bank comes back and says, no, we will not approve your request. But what we will do is reach out to the government and see if they will back the loan on your behalf for Fulton Bank to feel comfortable enough to mitigate that risk to be able to move forward approving your request. And therefore, the bank is then under the requirements of the government guidelines for approving your loan. And that's what the bank will follow, is what are those government guidelines to get you approved. And we're going to talk a little bit more about you know, the eight factors that you can come to the table to be ready to apply for this request. So it gives you a better understanding. So therefore, that's an SBA government-backed loan. The government takes the risk off the bank for us to be able to approve you for your request. So what is some of the value to be able to do an SBA loan? Well, SBA financing will finance up to 90%. They require less down payment, which is only 10%. They can also give you a more affordable monthly payment that's more streamlined to your cash flow. You know, we've got terms that can go anywhere from 10 up to 25 years. We'll talk more about that. So on an amortization schedule, your payment might be lower. SBA government-backed loans can provide funding for working capital, inventory equipment, or startup for purchasing a business. Or you may be just a startup business and you need funding for your business. So at Fulton Bank, we partner with business owners to meet your holistic business need, whether it's for conventional or traditional loans, or we actually are a preferred lender for SBA-backed government loans. And we do it really well. So we do both. We are one of those banks that do both. We're going to talk more about different business models and how that all banks are different in just a moment. So working with us shouldn't feel like an isolated purchase. We're really looking for a relationship and that's what you're looking for when it comes to a bank. We want to meet the needs of our business owners today and into the future, basically what my value statement is as I provide trusted advisement uh, for my clients moving forward. So consider reaching out if you feel like this is a type of product that could benefit you and your business. So for SBA government backed loans, what are the different loan programs that are out there? There's SBA 7A, there's SBA Express, 
and we're going to take a deeper dive into these particular programs that are on the screen. But there's also 504, which you can reach out to a bank that offers 504, which Fulton Bank does offer 504. And those particular loans work hand in hand with the CDCs in the community to be able to help you purchase a building for your business and or equipment. So, however, so does SBA 7A. And the difference is, is if you need working capital, meaning maybe you need payroll, maybe you need to build out instead of purchase a building, maybe it is you need to purchase a building, but you also need to do improvements and renovations along with working capital that you need six months of payroll or fixed and variable expenses for your business. And that's where SBA 7A loan and lines of credit program comes in that differentiates between and is different from the 504. So if you are the client that needs some working capital, uh, maybe you have build out, maybe you need supplies, maybe you need all of the above and building, 7A is where you want to hang your hat. So one of the questions as you're interviewing the banks to try to decide where you want to have your trusted advisement is does your bank do 7A SBA loans? And if they don't, probably you want to walk away and continue interviewing banks that do. Um, as I would mentioned as an example, Fulton Bank is one that does them and we specialize in them. So let's take a look at what SBA 7A programs are. So the maximum loan size is $5 million. That defines small business. So that's why uh, SBA is designed specifically to help those small businesses through this program. It gives you longer maturities and conventional commercial loans from 10 years for most of the basic loans and up to 25 years for real estate. So if you're looking for purchasing real estate, we can go up to 25 years. If you are looking for working capital or anything other than real estate, we go up to 10 years. Whereas when it comes to conventional traditional bank loans for small businesses, basically they'll give you up to five years Amortized may be out for 10 or 20 years. However, every five years, you've got to redo the loan. Whereas SBA, once we've done the loan, it's good for either 10 years or up to 25. So you don't have to keep doing it every five years. Term loans for the acquisition of a business. So if you're looking to buy an existing business, SBA government back loans is a great resource to be able to do that. Whether you're a startup, whether you're looking to acquire an existing business, whether you're looking for inventory, uh, maybe purchasing equipment, uh, maybe you need permanent working capital, SBA is a great resource for being able to do that. So the SBA offers a suite of specialized lines of credits as well. So maybe you don't want a fixed rate fixed payment at the end of the day is paid off. Maybe you want a revolving line of credit. We provide working capital lines, seasonal lines. So if it's cyclical and you only need it for short term, we provide those. And we offer contract lines of credit. Whether you're do, doing business with the government or the state, we offer contractual type of lines of credit. So if you have a government contract that you've bid on and you've won and has been awarded to you, SBA is a great resource as a line of credit to be able to fund that project for your business. And then there's SBA Express. Ex SBA Express is lines of credit and or a loan, depending on which way we set up the product. So here's how SBA Express works. Typically, usually, it's a 10-year type loan line of credit. 
For the first five years, we give you a revolving line of credit that you can use and pay down as you see fit. When it gets to the fifth year, if you have any funds left over on the line of credit, we term it out for the last five years. Fixed rate, fixed payment at the end of the day goes away. And that's how the SBA Express loan typically will work. And the SBA Express offers for veteran-owned businesses for the Veteran Advantage Program waiving the SBA guarantee fee. So if you are a veteran-owned business, the SBA Express is a great option for you. But on top of that, Fulton Bank for a veteran-owned business will waive the packaging fee. So uh, for the Fulton Bank packaging fee, and or the SBA Express Guarantee Fee for veteran-owned businesses, there are an incentives out there if you have um, spent time serving for our country. And I thank you wholeheartedly for that. And reach out to me because there are additional incentives for you to be able to do that. So through Fulton Bank. So one of the questions you may want to ask as you're choosing the right bank for you is do you offer veteran advantage programs for those small businesses that are veteran advantage owned? So what is considered qualified for a veteran advantage business? If the person that has a veteran is 51% or more owner of the business, <coughs> you are a veteran-owned business. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's talk about the SBA exporting loans and lines of credits as well. So if you are an international trading company and you do business internationally and export, these are the three types of loans, lines of credits that are out there. Export working capital, export express, and international trade loans. So in this particular area, a lot of businesses really don't even understand that they are an exporter. And let me take a moment and define some examples of what could make you an export business. Let's say you sell books and someone from Asia reach out, reaches out to you as a vendor and says, look, I need those books. Can you send me to Asia those books in order for me to sell in my country? That defines you as an exporter. Let's say that you reached out to Germany to get those books and to purchase them. And someone from Asia asks to buy them from you because you own them. That defines you as an exporter business. But there's a difference in if you're looking to purchase products or services internationally, that makes you an importer, and that is not what these loans are designed for. You must be an exporter in order to qualify for these types of lending. So export working capital, a lot of times you'll hear it referenced as an EWC line. Uh, it'll go up to $5 million as a line of credit, and it's used for short-term loans, usually less than one year or a line of credit for supporting export activities. So if you're looking to expand your business and be an exporter, this is a great way to be able to get a line of credit or a loan. In this particular situation, I do want to bring up to you, you will need an export international business plan in order to tell your story of what are you doing internationally as an exporter. 
we'll get into that a little bit more. There's an Export Express. The maximum size of this line of credit or loan is $500,000. So if you need a line or a loan larger than the $500,000, the Export Working Capital is a great backup. If you only need $500,000 or less, and maybe you want a longer term, instead of just one year or two years, maybe you need five years, Export Express is a great resource for you to think as an option for your business for exporting. So the maximum loan or line of credit is 500,000. It's usually meant for short term export purposes. It's a line of credit uh, that the line of credit proceeds can be used both for domestic and export related needs. So you can have a domestic part of your business where you do business within the United States, and you also do business outside of the United States internationally. This can be considered to be able to support your request for additional funding. Whereas export working capital is designed specifically for exporting only. The line is only for the export international components. So then there's international trade loans. The maximum loan size is up to $5 million. It's a term loan, and it really can be used to facilitate equipment, working capital that enhances your export ability. You can even use it to consider refinancing existing debt that your business has. It can use to be helpful for business owners to expand your export market, or if you're developing new export markets. International trade loans is a great resource to consider as you are looking for funding for your business. Let's stop and talk about a couple of things as we move on to how to prepare for financing and asking for an SBA request. We're going to break that down in the next few slides. But I want to talk to you about something. If you are considering SBA, Small Business Administration, things I want you to think about, you need to have your BAIL team in place. B-A-I-L acronym stands for the bank or the credit union, your accountant or CPA, your insurance company, and your lawyer. SBA, first of all, all banks and credit unions, let's talk about the B in your bail team acronym. All banks and credit unions are not the same. Please keep in mind that banks are a business. A lot of clients don't realize that banks are in business to make money just like you are on the phone today to open a business. You're not doing that to, be, to consider not making any money. You're looking to make money. So all banks are businesses. And just keep that in the back of your mind. And when you're looking to find the right bank or credit union, they all have different business models. So it's really important for you to interview the different banks that are out there and find the right bank trusted advisor for you. Because not all banks offer small business administration backed loans. Not all banks do 7A. Some banks do 504 only. Some banks do 7A only. Some banks don't do SBA at all. Some banks are preferred lender, that means that they do it well. Uh, they don't have to do a secondary approval process for getting your loan approved. Some banks are just SBA lenders, um, and it may be a longer process. It may be a twofold process where you're getting the bank and the government to approve your loan. So the banks that are preferred lenders uh, are banks that do it really well. 
So you may be looking specifically for a preferred SBA bank lending institution. As an example, Fulton Bank is that. We offer all of it, 504, 7A, Express. Um, we offer all of the options that we have mentioned today. And we are a preferred lender. And that's specifically what I do. So when you're out there interviewing, it's important for you to understand that all banks are not the same. It's important to find the right bank and trusted advisor for you. Accountants and CPAs, they're all different business models. Find the right trusted advisor for you. You're going to need each one of these professionals as a team for your business as you're moving forward strategizing the right solutions, options for you. The banks and the credit unions, they are going to be strategic to help you find money for your business and continue uh, building on that relationship. Accountants and CPAs are going to need to advise you whether you ask them to keep your books, uh, payroll, whether you ask them to do your taxes, whether it's a consultative role every quarter. Uh, for them to consult with you, how do you plan tax write-off, tax savings, all of the above. Insurance. SBA, if you're looking for an SBA loan, it's going to require life insurance for the life of the loan that you have with the government. Because if anything were to happen to you, the government wants to know they're going to get their money back. So they require insurance coverage. Whether you use your existing policy to, um, to assign to the bank, to cover the loan or you get an additional insurance policy for specifically the loan itself. Your lawyers and your attorneys, they're going to be trusted advisors to help you maybe set up your entity, help you figure out, you know, legally contracts, all of the above. All of those professionals are going to be important for you to consider as you are either in business or you're considering small business administration lending. So the top three reasons why most businesses fail, lack of planning. If you're looking to do an SBA request loan application, you're going to need and SBA requires a business plan. So that is one of the top three reasons why if a business fails in most reason, in most cases, why? So you'll need to start putting your business plan together. We're going to talk about what needs to go into your business plan as you're applying for your loan for SBA. But let's talk about the second reason. You just don't know what you don't know. A lot of entrepreneurs will fail in business because they don't seek out professional advice or congratulations for being on the call today. You're seeking out knowledge to help you understand how to run your business successfully. Continue taking classes through um, the Women's Business Center, the Small Business Development Centers, the SBDCs, uh, the Economic Development Department of each city usually has seminars, uh, the Veterans Business Outreach Center, all of those are different granted programs to continue education for entrepreneurs and small businesses to help them become successful or just take out of the picture you don't know what you don't know. And then the third reason, lack of capital. The reason we're here today, talk about how do you attain funding for your business when the banks or credit unions decline your request because there's too much risk. And SBA is a great resource for all of that. So here's where I am offering a disclosure. This particular material is for education purposes only, and it's not intended to be used for legal, tax, or investment advice. You want that bail team strategically chosen to offer you those details and be able to consult with them one-on-one. So let's talk about the eight factors that banks consider 
when you're applying for an SBA loan request to consider approving you. When you follow these techniques and what SBA, the government, is looking for to try to approve your loan, you'll have a better chance of being approved. A business plan is a must. Business plan, business plan, business plan. If you don't plan, you're planning to fail. So a business plan is a must. It's required in order to apply for this particular type of loan, whether it's a 7A, export, or express. A business plan is required by the government in order for you to apply. What is a business plan? It's your roadmap to the success of your business. It really defines and breaks out every nuance and detail about your business and puts it on paper. It's your ability to be able to tell your story, whether it's who your employees are, whether it's what marketing that you need money for to expand your business or start your business, whether it's telling us about the project that you're looking to fund, whether it is talking about economic trends, whether it's talking about your business credit or your personal credit, whether it's talking about who is on your bail team, it's telling your story. Tell the story. The better you're able to tell your story, the story for you needing funding, the better the bank understands and the government understands why they should consider funding your project. Get help when you need it. There are different resources in the community to help you build your business plan. They're not going to do it for you, but they're there to help you as you're putting your business plan together. And one of the resources is the Women's Business Center. Another resource is the Veterans Business Outreach Center. The SBDCs are great are are pro granted government provided um, programs and centers designed specifically to roll up their sleeves and help you build your business plan. They know what the banks are going to be looking for and you can have those free resources that you seek out if you need help in the community. Please know that you can get help. You're not alone to help figure out all of these details. So let's break down the eight factors the banks consider when you, we are trying to approve you for your request. Character, capacity, collateral, capital, conditions, cash flow, commitment, and credit. These are all the eight factors that we look at when we are considering approving you for your request. So let's break down each one. Now remember, you want to put every one of these factors in your business plan as you're doing your business plan. Because if you're discussing this with us down and putting it on paper, then we can go directly to those factors and see where your thoughts are. Let's talk about the first condition, uh, the first factor, which is condition. These are any outside circumstances that may positively or negatively impact the, your ability to repay the loan or your overall financial situation. These factors can be both internal or external. So some conditions you want to add into your business plan is your economic trends. You know, as I think of economic trends and a great example, let's talk about COVID and how it positively or negatively impacts your business. Speak to both. Be able to articulate 
if it was a negative impact and talk to us about it. One of the things, if you're applying for an SBA loan, we're going to send you or ask you to fill out a questionnaire about COVID and what did it do to impact your business. You want to talk about the stability of the client that you're going to be selling to for either your product or your service. You're going to need to talk about your specific industry. What industry is it? How stable is it in the world's environment today? What is the maturity of that industry? What are your local market conditions? Who is your competition? And is the loan that you're requesting or the line of credit that you're requesting justified? I'll tell you, a lot of my clients that ended up failing in their business, in some cases, one of the main reasons they failed is they didn't ask for enough money for the funding of their business. And most people are thinking, well, I don't need to ask for, you know, this, that, or the other. But it's a moment of time to really take a step back and decide, you know, is this enough of what I need for my particular project? The second condition is we want to look at your character. This is your the skills that you attain, your experience in the industry, your ability to run the business, uh, what your future growth looks like in that business. Have you had any training or education? What is your knowledge? And all of those things will need to go into your business plan because remember, the better you tell your story, the better chance you have to be able to help us understand if we need to approve your request for your loan. Tell us your story. What is your experience? Have you had any education? How long have you had experience in this particular industry? We want to know your background. The third factor is collateral. Sometimes when you're looking for an SBA request, the bank may or may not ask for collateral. And in most cases, the type of collateral the bank is looking for is equipment or real estate, whether it's personal real estate or business real estate. And when we look at that collateral to be considered, we're asking, what are you financing? Does the collateral have or hold value? What is its useful life? What's the loan to value? What's the cost of the collateral? And at the end of the day, if your business were to fail, do you have assets that can be claimed to make your payments instead? Now, not all the time will the bank ask for collateral, and in some cases they may, but be ready to discuss those options when you're coming to the bank to ask for the loan. Number four factor is liquidity or capital. If you're looking for an SBA loan, and let's say your project is $100,000, we are going to ask you to put in 10% of your own cash to the project first. So in that same example, let's say your project is $100,000, we are going to ask you to put 10%, which is $10,000. After you've spent the $10,000, then we actually fund the 90% or 90,000 in this case, as an example, for the rest of your request. SBA will also, in some cases, take into consideration money that you've already spent before you asked for your loan as consideration of your 10% capital. 
cash injection. So those are the things that you want to keep in consideration. So there are some products out there that do not require injection of your cash. That business credit cards, and in some cases, SBA loans may not require 10%. Each loan request, when it comes to SBA, stands on its own merit. Unlike conventional or traditional bank funding financing, SBA is where we live in a world of gray. It's not black and white. And we want to have that conversation with you about your project to see if there's an opportunity to put the deal together, to be able to fund your project. Number five is the capacity, your business's ability to pay back the loan. And you're like, well, if I don't have tax returns, cash flow statements, all of the above of interim profit and loss that I can show on the business that I have from years of being in business, how do I show proof that I can pay back the loan? All consideration. We're going to ask you through for a three-year projection in your business plan that's broken out month by month that's discussing all of your fixed and variable expenses and how much money that you would be able to bring in when you're selling to your customer. What's your profit margin? And we're going to ask you to take your best guess over the next three years of what that is. Now remember, the bail team is there to help you. You're not alone. You may need your accountant or CPA, Certified Public Accountant, to help you figure out what those projections are. And in that particular situation, you're going to need to know what your loan payment is going to be so you can actually put that in your projection as one of your expenses. In this particular category for capacity to pay the loan back, another factor we take, the banks take in consideration, is if you have any outside source of income. Maybe you have a second job. Maybe you have a retirement. Maybe you served the military, you retired from the military, and now you're opening your own business. Maybe you have a spouse that brings in additional income and will consider being an additional guarantor. So if the business were to fail, the bank still knows it'll get its money back. Those are all factors that we take in consideration when we're trying to see if you have the capacity to be able to pay the loan back. Number six, your cash flow. We're going to ask you for one year cash flow balance sheet. And it's broken down for each month of all of what's coming into the business and what's going out as far as expenses to the business. And we want to know that you know what that is. And if you're a startup business, you're going to just take your best guess of what that is. Your willingness to be all in. I have a lot of clients that are like, wait a minute, Sabrina, this process, too much for me. I just don't want to have to go through all of that. Well, remember, banks are in business to make money. And if you're not all in, why do you think the bank wants to be all in to be able to fund your projects? And this is an option for you to consider if you cannot get traditional bank funding for your business or conventional financing. This is your backup. Lastly, we take in consideration both your personal credit score and your business credit score when we are considering 
funding your project. So if you have challenges on your personal credit, try to focus in on how do you fix that. You need to get that right and fixed. Look, there's no judgment. You may have challenged credit for a lot of different reasons. And it may be you had an unexpected divorce. It could be you had an unexpected job loss. Maybe you had unexpected medical expenses. We understand that. But we also are risk adverse. At the end of the day, the bank is in business to make money. We want to make sure we're going to get our money back. And what is personal and business credit scores? At the end of the day, it's a trust factor. Can we trust to make sure that we know we're going to get the money back? And if you're not paying other bills or you have collections or judgments, it's too risky for the bank. So we consider that too much risk. And in that particular situation, we may not approve the request because we don't really think we're going to get our money back if you're not paying your existing loans. So you got to fix that first. If you do not have business credit, you can use your personal credit to be considered for approving you for a business loan. And that's one of the benefits of pulling your personal credit because we're going to ask you if you're asking for an SBA loan. We're going to ask you if you're a 20% owner of the business to personally guarantee your loan request. So if you're thinking about partnering up with someone, you want to have that conversation about what their credit looks like. Because if you're going to give them 20% or more ownership of the business, we are going to pull their credit. Someone's good credit as an owner does not make someone's challenged credit good. If there's challenge credit as an ownership of the business, it's still going to be too risky for the bank and could possibly turn into a decline. So the last part that I want to talk about and discuss is what's required documentation as you're considering applying for an SBA 7A, whether it is a 7A loan, uh, whether it's an express loan or line of credit, or whether it's an export loan or line of credit. What's required for documentation to be approved, or not to be approved, to be considered for an SBA loan? We're going to ask you for a personal financial statement. For each guarantor of the request of 20% or more, we're going to ask you for your last three years personal tax return for any owner of 20% or more of the business. We're going to ask for the last three years business tax return. If you've been in business for a minimum of three years, we're going to ask you for those three years business tax returns and or three years business tax returns of any business if you own 20% or more. If you're already in business and you haven't done your taxes for that year, we're going to ask you for your interim financial re information such as your balance sheet and your profit and loss year to date for that business. We're going to ask you for a brief narrative business plan for your request. We're going to ask you for your resume and any owner of the business of 20% or more. And if you're a startup business, and you have less than two years tax returns, we're going to ask you for a full business plan to include projections 
profit and loss statement for three years, including your assumptions. We're going to also ask you for opening day pro forma, a balance sheet. And then we're going to ask you for 12 months of cash flow projections for your business. I am going to put up information for my contact information so I can give you um, a way to be able to reach out to me if you have um, additional questions that we're not able to address today or you have additional questions or you just want to move forward with considering SBA for financing your business. Um, up on the screen, and um, I also give you my cell phone number. Texting is just fine, um, and bear with me as I bring that up. Getting there. My apologies for the delay. All right, and let me share this. This is my contact information. If you want to take a picture of it with your phone, or if you just have questions, whether you use Fulton Bank or not, I'm here to help you because I truly care about the success of your business. And being a trusted advisor, financial advisor for over 27 years, I don't want you and your business and your family to fail. So therefore, uh, is the reason why I volunteer my time to do this, to be able to help you think about those things as you are looking for funding for your business. Um, a couple of things that I want you to think about, just because you can doesn't necessarily mean you should. Um, I have some businesses that can, you know, ask for funding all day long and get approved, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be successful if we do fund their business. So you want to make sure at the end of the day, it is the right solution for you, and I'm here to help. Don't forget about your bail team as you are putting together your information uh, and help is out there. You are not alone. Please reach out to those resources. Thank you for being on the call today to be able to help you understand those different um, trusted advisors that you're going to choose. Your bail team, Deborah Gittins as for the Women's Business Center. You've got um, different resources like um, Women in Defense, programs to be able to help you, the Small Business Diversity and uh, Supply Authority um, a resource to help you to, if you're looking for a client such as um, government contracts to bid on. You've got um, the SBDCs out there. You've got VBOC, the Veterans Business Outreach Center. So please reach out and continue moving forward with resources to help you and your business become successful. You know, in the room, you can actually network. There are other business owners and entrepreneurs that can maybe even help you with your business, maybe, you know, help you with additional clientele. You know, do you know who's on the call today? Do you know uh, how to reach out to them if maybe there's a CPA on the call today listening to this information that can help you? Um, Continue to collaborate. You never know how someone can actually help you with your business. So with having said that, I'm going to stop sharing, and I'm going to look into the chat room and see if we can give you some time today 
and answering questions that you might have. And I'm going to start with the chat room. And in some cases, I may ask you to take your um, yourself off mute if I don't have a very clear understanding of what those questions are. So, Deborah, uh, I want to make sure that I can see these questions, and you may be able to help me with that. I'll give it my best try. <laughs> I think I see Veronica, if, I, if I'm correct, that asked a question, can a company apply for an SBA loan even though a COVID-19 loan was granted? Absolutely. That's a great question. Thank you for being the first question and um, willing to be bold and brave enough to put yourself out there. I really appreciate it. You know, this is your time, guys, and I want you to feel free and know that this is a safe environment to ask your questions. You've got the banker uh, here with you today, and I'm happy to answer any questions that, uh, that you may have. You know, I was with Bank of America, I was with, with Wells Fargo, Wachovia Bank, and, and now I'm with Wachovia, I mean, uh, now I'm with Fulton Bank. You know, Fulton Bank is in five states, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, Pennsylvania, and of course, um, Jersey as well. So ask those questions because I want you to have the best experience on the call today because that's what we're here for. Um, so the answer to that very great question, yes, even though you have received maybe the EIDL loan or the PPP loan um, and you're getting it forgiven or you're paying back the loan, absolutely, you can still apply for an SBA request uh, based on the loan products that we talked about if uh, you find that there is still a need. We're here to help. You know, think about SBA as a way that the government and the bank says, you know, if you cannot get conventionally financed or you were turned down on a traditional bank loan, we're here. That's what we're here for. You know, if you can get a bank loan, then SBA is not for you. Uh, maybe you can get a bank loan, but you want to put less money down. Conventional, conventional or traditional banks are looking for a minimum of 20%. And maybe you only want to put 10%, but you can still get a bank loan. SBA is a great resource for you. Um, next question. Thank you for all your information. I think you answered all my questions. Thank you, Caitlin, for that feedback. That helps us know that we are uh, giving you the information that you need to be successful with your business and things that you should think about and strategizing uh, as you're moving forward to consider funding for your business. Um, thank you, Veronica, for the, um, the feedback. Um, I appreciate that. Um, Caitlin says, I do have a question about how long is the process from start to finish when someone is looking for uh, an SBA loan? And that's a great question. So once we have all the documentation that I had mentioned on the screen and the slide to be able to apply for the loan request, um, you're looking at anywhere from 45 days up to 90 days for approval. Uh, not for approval, to fund your request. Your approval will happen within the first 30 days once we have the documentation or less. Um, but documentation, in some cases, uh, cause us to come back and ask additional questions or look for additional um, documentation to move forward because we want to make sure, the bank wants to make sure that we are following the government guidelines and conditions for your approval. Um, and that may be a little bit longer process than a traditional bank loan because at the end of the day, traditional bank loans or conventional financing is just tax returns, um, interim statements, uh, pulling your, 
your credit report um, and approval and decline. Uh, it's very black and white, whereas SBA is in the world of gray. So many things could be different in so many different circumstances, and your request is not going to be the same as someone else's request. Everybody's loan with SBA stands on its own merits. It's going to be different for everyone. And each process is going to be different. Some of you may be looking to purchase a building which requires an appraisal and that could take 45 days just in itself. Sometimes you may be using your home, equity in your home as collateral and we have to do an appraisal on your home. Again, that could take 30 to 45 days and it could delay the process. So some of the loans need an attorney to close. And if that's the case, the attorney has to prepare documentation. So that could be a little bit of a delay. So I love the question. I'm so glad you asked. Um, so that is the range of what you're looking at from start to finish on the process of your request. But if you're just now starting your business, uh, business plan, it may take you a week to put that business plan together. So the documentation that you're going to need sometimes takes a little bit of time in itself. So thank you so much for the question. I want to uh, open up for discussion. Uh, if you have a question or a comment, you may take yourself off mute at this point and ask that question or give us a comment on the material for today. Let us know how we're doing. Um, Caitlin has another question. If an attorney is needed, is that a cost from the lender? So those are what we consider closing costs. We can add closing costs, even attorney fees that you are having to pay to the loan request. You do not need to come out of pocket for that. So it can be considered as part of the loan request. Caitlin, you're on fire today. I can tell you're really thinking through these questions and I appreciate that. Uh, it helps others in the room as we are looking to answer questions for you. So although your bail team, not the bank, but maybe your accountant, maybe your attorney, comes at a cost, you can put that request in your loan amount. So great question. Anybody else that has a question, please take yourself off mute or put that in the chat. Um, Giovanna, and I hope that I am uh, pronouncing your name, Dr. Baker, let's say that. Uh, comment, thank you so much for this truly invaluable information. You have made the complicated simple. Thank you so much for saying that, and I am very appreciative. I'll definitely be in contact with Fulton Bank in a very short term in the future. Um, thank you so much for that comment. Deborah. I don't think we have any more questions at this point. Would you like to um, end the session? Yes, it doesn't seem that we do. I appreciate everybody joining us. Um, for those of you that have registered, I can send those um, slides to you if Sabrina wouldn't mind sending them to me. I'd be happy to. And, uh, and again, this is the first presentation that we've done on this. Um, so I love it and I'm happy. You're the first to hear it. And I'm happy that we were able to do that for the Women's Business Center. Yes. We